with our DA. I asked him beforehand, hey, anywhere you want to go in particular? I didn't do that this time. So we're just going to be free agents here with uh, attorney, District Attorney Bob Manzi. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. How are you today? Wonderful. Wonderful. I just mentioned to you that moments ago, literally in the last five minutes, we debuted a brand new poll question at WCCSradio.com. I'll be interested to get the results uh, because uh, only a few people have had a chance so far to respond to it. The question is, we're all anonymous here, so let's be honest. Have you ever lost money because of a scammer? And there are three possible responses. Yes, over a thousand. Yes, under a thousand or nope. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out because we hear more and more and more every day, especially now with AI coming into the mix about scams. They're everywhere. Scams are everywhere. And I think one of the important parts about tackling scams is recognizing that many people are victims of a scam. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, It is throughout the County, independent of age, independent of, level of education, of what you do for a living. So many people have been targeted for scams uh, and have fell victims to scams. And sometimes you're a victim to a scam and there's nothing you could have done to prevent it. They Mm -hmm. steal your credit card in some way that you, even looking back, don't know how they got the numbers. Yeah, I, I still remember my credit card company calling me to say, uh, my credit card was being used in New York City to buy gift cards to different food shops. Mm-hmm. I have no idea how they got the number, but they got the number, and fortunately we were able to stop it before there was any financial loss. So uh, yeah. they're they're certainly out there. Yeah, they they really are. And um, for many folks who are already vulnerable, um, it, it becomes a bigger problem because they really don't have people around them, uh, a support system of folks around them who can help them through a situation uh, well, you know, because uh, of the situation that you encountered, uh, that there are so many things that you don't think of that have to be taken care of. Credit card companies that uh, have to be notified, banks that have to be notified. Um, then you have to go through the hassle of getting a new card. You have to find some way to get your funds before the new card arrives. All of that has to be worked out. It, it is a great deal of hassle. Um, but taking those steps to work to prevent yourself from being a victim uh, certainly is well worth it. Um, you know, when you look at credit cards anymore, we're used to hearing about scams where they're trying to get thousands of dollars from folks. And one of the scams that we're seeing now more than anything is they're trying to just get a little bit of money, mm-hmm. less than $20, uh, and they get onto your credit card bill as a reoccurring bill. And there's a lot of people that maybe $20 doesn't really come up when they're looking at their monthly bill. Yeah, They don't take the time to go through, itemized, and make sure, yes, I did purchase everything that the bill lists. And, you know, they get $20 a month from thousands of people's credit cards um, until it's found. We had one individual who they found one. We worked with them. They went back, uh, and their credit card company reimbursed them about $440 because mm-hmm. uh, it had just been going on for so long. Yeah. So, so it's taking all of those steps to protect yourself. Yeah. Um, so watch out for scammers. We'll watch our poll and see um, how that all works out over the course of the next week or so. So let's talk about other things uh, in Indiana County. Of course, uh, there's a, always an active court schedule going on. You're involved in that. Um, and uh, you also are involved in outreach programs. Uh, what you've been doing lately? <laughs> well, one of the big outreach programs now, it, it's summertime. And, and I wish we could sit here and talk baseball all morning. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was listening to you this morning on the way in the courthouse. And I love hearing about Indiana High School's baseball team winning a state game. They're, they're going to go play. They're going to go win another game. That's a, that's a great team, a great group of kids. Um, but it is summertime. That means, you know, everyone's staying up a little later. We have a lot of people sitting back by the campfire at night. Uh, enjoying the company of friends and, and maybe a beer or two. And one of the big pushes now is just making sure we're getting the information to folks to uh, prepare to have a driver home. Mm-hmm. Uh, summertime is the biggest season for DUI drivers. Uh, and, and it's very simple because there's a lot of times where people are on vacation uh, or they're out at the campfire or they're off doing some fun activities 
and they decide to have a drink or two with friends, it's just important to make sure that you're not driving while intoxicated. Uh, you know, 4th of July weekend is the biggest weekend for DUI drivers all year. We have that coming up in a month here. Uh, and we just really want people to take the time to make sure they have a sober driver to take them home. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of fun to be out with friends. Uh, you know, we have a couple great breweries here in Indiana County. We have a lot of great campfires going on in Indiana County. Uh, you know, it is summertime and it's a great time to relax and be with friends and be outdoors. Uh, I really want to encourage people to make sure they have a sober driver come home because as you said, I have a busy court calendar. DUIs are 35 to 40% of our caseload. Wow. And it is just, it is a completely preventable case. Yeah. 100% preventable. And I would rather have less and less DUI cases. I'd, I'd prefer to have zero. Uh, and really what I want to do is encourage people. And we openly tell folks, our police, especially in the summertime, are out there looking for DUI drivers. We don't hide the fact. The Pennsylvania State Police puts their announcements out all the time. They're doing extra patrols. We do that for a reason. We want people to not drink and drive. That's mm-hmm. our goal. We want you to not drink and drive. So we don't try to surprise you. We're not trying to catch you. We'd rather you not drink and drive. Yeah. If you do drink and drive, there is a lot of extra patrols out there, especially in the summertime, uh, and you risk significant fines, jail times, you know, your name in the paper for being arrested. Nobody wants that. Loss of license. You know, and those are, are the minor concerns. You could be risking your life, someone else's life. You could end up, you know, being hurt for the rest of your life or hurting somebody for the rest of your life. So a lot of the outreach right now is trying to encourage folks to make sure you have a sober driver. Probably a good time to salute to the folks who take part in DUI task force work. Uh, I know that state police and Punxsy just put a release out yesterday that in the month of June, they're going to be doing some some roving DUI task forces uh, where where people drive through. And, you know, people might get upset. Oh, man, I have to go through this thing. I have to find my license and my owner's card and, and all of those things and verify that I've not been drinking. But you think about the benefit, uh, and it's a very, very minor inconvenience. It's a very minor inconvenience uh, that could save your life. It could save the life of somebody in your family, one of your friends. Um <laughs> You know, taking that time to make sure somebody's safe. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, nobody really wants to see anybody. Nobody wants to see anyone get hurt, period. And if you're able to stop that from happening, uh, stop somebody from getting hurt or stop somebody from getting killed, uh, that's what's what's important. Um, There's there's many times where I'm traveling, uh, and I've talked to a DA in in a close county uh, where I've been a witness to three DUIs that I've called 911 and, said this person's clearly DUI, and they were arrested for DUI. Um, and it's important because they got, they got stopped, they got arrested for DUI, and nobody got hurt. Um, what I hope is before you even get behind the wheel of the car, you make sure you have a sober driver. Call a friend, call a family member, sleep on your friend's couch. There's so many other things you can do. There, there's you know Ubers and Lyfts. Uh, there's just a lot that can be done. And I prefer that you do not drink and drive. We're, that's our goal. Yeah. Uh, something else that has uh, come up in recent weeks, um, because we've seen it in neighboring counties and in Indiana County, uh, charges filed against uh, people, uh, drug delivery resulting in death, mm-hmm. um, or plain old drug delivery. Um, fortunately, nobody died in, in this incident or that, but there have been some of drug delivery resulting in death. It's a relatively new um, criminal code violation, drug delivery resulting in death in Pennsylvania, but it's perfectly valid and uh, supported by the courts. And uh, so we've had those recently. Uh, substance abuse is, is a terrible, terrible scourge, and uh, it is out there. And with fentanyl, uh, it takes a tiny, tiny amount, doesn't it? It's an incredibly tiny amount of fentanyl, and we're starting to see it, a new drug, xylazine, that, that's coming into Indiana County. It's been in the cities for a few months now. Uh, but the drug delivery resulting in death, we have now about five or six cases that we've charged with that. Um, and, and my hats are off to the law enforcement officers that are doing the time-staking efforts to uh, investigate those cases. If, if we step back and think about it, a crime like that happens when one person dealing with substance abuse disorder 
is buying drugs or getting drugs delivered to them from another person, and then they ingest the drugs and die. Uh, there's no witnesses or, or the witness to the crime is the person that's being charged with the crime. Mm-hmm. Uh, so being able to investigate and get enough evidence to even charge a person with that crime uh, takes a great deal of work. So, so my hats are off to the police officers that are doing that very detailed work and getting there. Uh, we have several cases that we anticipate coming to uh, convictions and sentencing. If you have drugs and you give them to somebody, they ingest them and they die, you're facing drug delivery resulting in death charges. You could be facing other felony ones such as voluntary manslaughter, uh, simple drug delivery. Uh, you're, you're facing jail time on top of the fact of knowing that you participated in someone else's death. And, and maybe it wasn't intentional. Maybe you didn't give them the drugs hoping they would die. Um, but that is certainly a reasonable expectation. If you give somebody drugs, they could die. Um, so that's part of our drug task force work, uh, going after the drug dealers. We, we will continue to go after the drug dealers. We just had Operation Lake Effect to put 70 defendants in the federal custody. Uh, we're going to continue those efforts. Uh, but that is one of the prongs of the drug task force is looking at drug delivery resulting in death uh, and facing significant jail time. From a prosecutor standpoint, um, is it technically more difficult uh, to to run one of those cases through court and get a conviction uh, because of the the ambiguousness of uh, whether or not uh, the drug delivery actually resulted in the death? It, those can be very difficult cases to prosecute. Yes, uh, again, you have a lack of human being witnesses uh, to that, so you're working a lot off of uh, telephones and telephone messaging. Uh, all the various ways people are contacting each other. Uh, You're relying on the laboratories reports that you're doing, a a toxicology report, um, the autopsy report, and then any drugs that are found. Um, But it's really, uh, our law enforcement have really used very good investigative techniques um, in order to uh, kind of couch together various multiple investigations that put the pieces to the puzzles. They are very difficult. And the other difficult part to it is, uh, you know, we have individuals who really find it difficult to hold the drug dealer accountable for what they did, and they almost blame the victim, uh, Uh saying that the victim, well, the victim shouldn't have used drugs. They should have not chosen it. Um, And it's very difficult to to really overcome some of those hurdles. Uh, You know, I always say it's, a situation where, you know, just because you were the victim of a crime doesn't mean you asked for it. Uh, If I keep my doors unlocked at night, which I don't, but if I kept my doors unlocked at night and somebody burglarized my house, that doesn't mean it's my fault. Um, And and we have drug dealers that are preying on these folks who are trying to overcome their substance abuse disorders. They're they're going to treatment. They're they're seeking that out. And then the drug dealers uh, just continuously... Uh, hound them and unfortunately make that available. All right. So there's our visit with the DDA and Bob Banzi uh, this morning here on Indiana in the morning. I'm still stumbling around because I use the word ambiguity um, <laughs> as if I'm from England or something. Ambiguity. I know that word by golly. Uh, anything else in re- outreach uh, terms? You're going to have meetings or, or um, we're going to continue going to the senior centers and talking about the scams yeah. as we talked about. Um, you know, my office is always free to come talk to groups. We were just talking with uh, the kids at Camp Cadet uh, yesterday, which is a great program that the Pennsylvania State Police runs. So if there's any groups out there that, that want us to come in and speak on any topics, we're certainly more than welcome to come visit. Yeah, they're at the Bible camp, aren't they? They are. Yeah, beautiful. Ambiguity. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, Mr. D.A., thanks so much. Thank you very much. I I look forward to some good reporting on Indiana baseball having more success. There we go. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com.